Welcome to Firebase release notes for September, where we cover big and small releases from Firebase. I've got six topics for you today, so let's get started. First up, let's talk about Firestore, which has received some powerful enhancements this month. We have just finished adding support for vector fields across multiple SDKs. This means you can now seamlessly read and write vectors in your Firestore database using the JavaScript, Swift, and Kotlin SDKs. This enables exciting use cases for AI like semantic search, personalized recommendations, or more intelligent chatbots. But that's not all. Support for k-nearest neighbor vector search has just gone to general availability for Firestore's Python and Node.js SDKs. This allows you to perform powerful vector searches and combine them with inequality filters. You can even retrieve the computed vector distance and specify a distance threshold for even more refined results. The team is working on adding support for client SDKs too, so stay tuned for an update on this soon. Next, we have some updates on GenKit, our AI integration framework. GenKit for Go has just released version 0.1.1, introducing a plugin for the VV8 vector database and adding support for both Flow and Firebase authentication plugins. GenKit.js has released version 0.5.13, bringing improvements for the Google Cloud and Firebase plugins and the way to disable I.O. logging. Some other notable updates include support for multiple imagine models in Vertex AI and rendering dot prompts in a new trace span. Moving on to Cloud Functions, our serverless offering. We've made a significant change. As of version 6.0.0, all functions that do not explicitly specify a version when importing the SDK will be treated as second generation functions. Second generation functions are based on Cloud Run functions, which brings a host of benefits, such as better performance, more configuration options, better monitoring, and even more sophisticated ways to integrate with other services via Event Arc. You can still use Cloud Functions version 1 by changing the import from Firebase Functions to Firebase Functions version 1 but we recommend upgrading to second-generation functions using the migration guide linked in the description. Turning our attention to the Apple SDK. We fixed a couple of bugs, for example, one that would cause crashes in Xcode 16 beta, and most prominently, an issue in the real-time database that caused temporary disconnects when the app goes inactive. This issue was introduced in 10.27.0 and is fixed in 11.2.0. The team has also been working on improving support for Swift concurrency. For example, all public classes in the Firebase SDK that only include read-only properties are now marked as sendable, so you should see fewer warnings from the Swift compiler. Firebase Remote Config supports server-side configuration using the Firebase Admin SDK for Node.js in version 12.1 and above. This allows you to dynamically manage the behavior and configuration of server-side applications using Remote Config. For example, if you want to select different prompt or model configurations in your GenKit flows, you can define the following parameters in your Remote Config server template and then load them in your flow. We've just added a new feature to make this even more flexible, custom signals. Using the custom signal condition type, you can now match arbitrary conditions you define in your application. For example, you can use a cheaper model for users who are not signed into your mobile app or a faster model for users who are in the paid tier of your app. To learn more about this feature, check out the custom signal section in the docs. And finally, I am pleased to announce that AppCheck for Google Identity for iOS is now generally available. This enhances security for your iOS apps by verifying the authenticity of requests coming from your app. To learn how to add this to your project, check out the Getting Started Guide. Those were all the updates we had for you today. 
If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel below. My name is Peter and I'll see you on a future episode of Firebase Release Notes.